Hello and welcome back to the next video of React Sprint series. So in the previous video, I told you the basic usage of the use Spring hook, which is provided by the React Spring library. Well, it was fun. We just build a quick circle which goes through x equal to 0 to x equal to 500. And in that video, I gave you a challenge where you had to build something like this. When you, when you hover the mouse on top of this, it starts going from x equal to 0 to some, some x equal to some value. And when you remove the mouse, it goes back. When you put the mouse once again, it goes forward, back, forward, back. Something like this. Well, I didn't give you, there are two things that I want to tell you right now. I didn't give you the end result in the previous video. Usually in the challenges, I do give the end results. Uh, I show you what you want to, what you have to build. But in the previous one, I kind of wanted you to explore a little bit. I wanted you to kind of be, I wanted it to be an open-ended problem. I wanted you to be as creative as you want because the information that I gave you was very, very basic. So now this is the second point that I want to tell you that I gave you just the basic, very basic information. And this was not enough to build something like this. So if you really tried it out, it's okay if you could not. It's, it's completely fine. A lot of the challenges that I give to my students, uh, 50 to 80 percent of the people are not able to complete it, which is, which is fine. The only thing that matters is that you tried. So I'm guessing that you uh, you would have tried to play around with something here but you must have seen that okay how do i control this animation how do i make it to start when i move the mouse on top of it so this is the thing that i didn't tell you in the previous video which i'm going to tell you right now now, now these are the things how you can control your animation if you have learned this thing now that is the I, I would say if you know this thing you can do anything you want with this react spring library so in real world applications, you cannot just let your animation start as soon as the web page loads. Otherwise, it would not be a good user experience. Of course, it will not be. Because in the real world application, we want the animation to be controlled. Now, when we talk about controlled animations, how do we make them? So the, uh, the documentation is actually good. It says reacting to events. So, of course, very rarely you find yourself needing animation to occur only on mount. We usually want animations to occur when the user interacts with it, something like this, some exactly like this. Now, how do you, how do you do that? This happens using the API that the use spring returns. So the use spring method will return a kind of an API. So it returns two kind of objects in an array which we can destructure uh, kind of thing. And the first one is the spring, which is the spring values, which is nothing but the styles. What's the second one? Second one is the API, which can help us control the animation. Now, you don't need to uh, worry too much about it. It's very, very simple. I'm going to show you a basic example. So let's create a new spring value. Const, let's say spring two, spring two seems fine. And I'm going to create a new use spring now here you can either provide an object or you can actually provide a function which returns an object so you see it it's, it's directly returning an object you can alternatively write it like this return this add your values here but we can kind of reduce this shorthand technique uh, with something like this since we directly want to return some object kind of structure so we don't need to write that return statement and all this stuff. We can have a simple function. Now what I'm going to return is, uh, I'm going to have a from value. The from value will start from x equal to zero once again. Don't worry, I know, I know you must be thinking that it's not always starting from zero. It's starting from kind of a current position. How do we get to that? Don't worry, I told you, I will tell you a lot of things in this video. But after this video, I can assure you that you can have any kind of animation that you want. Cool. So what happens after that? Now, we don't really want to provide the two. It is starting from zero, but we don't want to provide it till the point where it goes. We want it to be controlled, right? So how will this happen? I'm going to tell you. Uh, 
a, a quick thing. Okay, let's 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 do one thing. Let's figure that out later on. But for now, let's have a config. In that config, I'm going to put the duration as 1000. That's it. Simple thing. And as we saw, that our uSpring function, uSpring hook, can either return directly the spring values or it can return an array which can have the spring values as well as an API object. And what can we use that, that API for? Let's have a look into it. So uh, obviously, since we want to start start something when we hover the mouse over this circle, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to provide uh, so this, as you see, this animated.div, this is nothing but a HTML element. So as any usual React component or an HTML element, we can actually provide it some values, for example, for some, some event handlers, for example, on mouse down, on mouse enter, on mouse leave, and so on. So on mouse enter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function here. Let's say const handle mouse enter and what's going to happen after this is for now let's just say console.log handle mouse enter and let's open our log here i'm going to open it at the bottom and i'm going to close this yeah let's see handle mouse enter make sure you don't call this you have to provide it right Otherwise, you already know that this is the basics of uh, JavaScript. Like when you provide any function, this is a function. You are assigning a function here. You're not calling that function, right? You, you don't have to do like this. Or if you have to call it, you would have to do something like this. I hope this is the basic thing that you already know. Like you have to this you have to provide a function here, not the not 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 you don't have to call the function here, right? So let's see what happens. I will restart and 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 okay, it's still using Spring, so I don't want it to use Spring. I want it to use Spring too. Now let's see what happens. Let's refresh. Nothing happens because I have not provided two value, right? It starts at x equal to zero, and it remains at x equal to zero. But whenever I hover the mouse, it says handle mouse enter. Perfect. So now that we have this, it's let me show you another magic. So when I told you we can use this API to control our animation, to control when does the animation starts, and that's how we are going to do it. So we can provide the from and to all those values inside the start function. So it's going to start from x equal to 0. You can actually pretty much even remove this, actually. Uh, it should not really matter from x equal to 0 to x equal to, let's say, 500. And config, we already have it defined here. Now let's see what happens. Uh, and nothing really happened. Why didn't it happen? OK, because we actually should provide uh, from, just a second, from x equal to 0. Cool. Perfect. So as you saw, it goes. As soon as you as soon as you hover the mouse over it, it starts from zero. It always starts from zero. Now the thing that we need to fix is it should actually start from the current position. But there's also one thing. We need to actually make it go to the reverse direction whenever the um, whenever the uh, whenever I move the mouse out. So how are we going to handle that? I think you would be able to do it on your own now as well, right? Can you take this challenge? Pause this video and try to build something like a handle mouse leave. How will you build that? Just pause this for a minute I'll, and then we'll get started. Cool. So now let's get started. So it's very simple on mouse leave. So on mouse leave, we'll build something similar const handle mouse leave and I'm going to do API dot start. We could also do API dot stop. Uh, but I'll tell you in just a minute that why we are doing API dot start once again. So what actually you could do is something like this. So API also has a stop 
field. So you could just stop it. It would stop it right there. But what I want to do is I want I don't want it to stop. I want it to go back from there. So this is my requirement. So what I'll do is start a reverse. Uh, yeah, I'll start a reverse kind of a animation. Perfect. And what is going wrong? Because I haven't provided any argument. So let's provide handle mouse leave. Perfect. And see, as soon as I move my mouse outside, it starts from the opposite direction. I'll just increase the duration to let's say 2000 or something so that it kind of is a little bit slow, uh, which is fine. We are going to fix this glitch in just a second. So now, yeah, it, it, it's, you can see it's kind of glitchy because why is this happening is because as soon as I move my mouse outside, it starts from here, whereas I want it to start from there itself. Now, how do we handle it? How do we handle that? Very simple. I'm going to tell you another quick property of this use spring. Use spring is a very, very amazing kind of a hook. What you can also have is all these, all these on start. You can say it, you, you can think of it similar to like React lifecycle methods or event handlers or whatever you want to call it. Whenever it starts, whenever it stops, whenever it changes, whenever it uh, pauses, all those things, whenever it resumes, you can actually follow those things. So it has an argument. Uh, let's say x and that argument let's let's have a look into what is that argument let's log the values actually console.log x and yeah perfect so as soon as i start it it starts changing so if you see all these are the values of this event it it is actually an event x so what all does it have? It has three things. It has a boolean called cancelled, boolean called finished, and then a value. With this value is nothing but all those styles that you have provided here. It see it it is actually noting down. It's actually handling. It's actually uh, monitoring what all styles are changing. And we know the here the only one style is changing, which is the x value. Which is simple and in the last one it will actually it should say f uh, finish equal to true i am not sure why it didn't say it uh, but it is fine because i think okay that's fine uh, we can think about it later on let's see now actually it should actually say for finished equal to true but that's fine okay now let's not spend too much time into it Act ideally it should but yeah, never mind. Cool. So coming back into it, um, if you want, I can actually look into what is the problem here. Why finished is not showing as true when the when it is actually finished. But it's okay. We don't really need it for this project. Uh, but if you want, I can look into it. Anyway, anyways. So uh, where were we? Yeah. So you know, at every moment, at every change, we know the value. We know the value of the x. We know the position the x-axis position of the circle and we are going to use that it's x dot value dot x actually yeah so i'm going to call it an event ev or something instead of x because x dot value dot x doesn't really sound very good so perfect now what is, what is going to happen is now how do i make it a controlled animation if you know react a little bit you must have seen all those controlled components right what are controlled components like those various forms where you actually store the value of the form inside a state we are going to do something similar something very very similar what i'm going to do is have a temporary local state here which i'm going to call current position and i'm also going to have it a set current position and I'm going to say you react dot use state or directly use state. So if I directly use use state, it actually imports my Visual Studio Code actually imports uh, use state from React. If in case it does not import automatically for you, you will have to manually write this uh, thing use state, and you have to provide some default value. 
zero. So currently, as soon as we load our web app, the default value of the x axis or x position is actually zero. Now what we want to do is we want to set initial value initial like setting an initial value is very, very essential right otherwise we don't really have any initial x value here in the styles and it won't change so api can control the change but we need to have some initial value as well so what i'm going to do here is instead of zero i'm going to set it as a current position to make it a hundred percent controlled animation or a controlled component as you also know in in the in terms of react we could definitely go with zero because uh, always the default state would always be zero. But as you know, it's always better to have a current. OK, I'm changing the wrong one. We are no longer using spring, so I'll just comment it out. So let's have the current position here. X equal to current. Why I'm doing this? Because we can actually change. Let's say if our project react requirements were not to start from x equal to zero, but to start from x equal to 50. What would you do in that case? You would have to change it at two places. First, you'll have to change it at 50 here, and then you'll have to change to 50 here as well. So you would have a repetition of code. And code repetition isn't a good thing, right? So that's why we are using this variable directly, current position. It will always have the default value in the, when, whenever the or whenever our object mounts for the first time. Perfect. And now we are almost done. As you know, it's very simple. We, as soon as I hover my mouse on top of this circle, instead of starting from zero, I need to start from the current position. And as soon as I leave the mouse from that, I, instead of starting from 500, I need to again start from current position. And that's it. We are done. Right? Perfect. It's perfect, but it did not work. It did not work. It's actually jumping back to zero. And I want you to answer why is it happening? I want you to answer it because we are never actually setting the current position. It's, it's, it was a dumb mistake, but it can happen. And I actually made it on purpose because I wanted to show you what all kind of mistakes can we do while building, while developing applications. And this was a very common mistake. We are using current position, but we forgot to update the current position. So to update the current position inside this on change, I am just going to set my set current position ev.value.x. That's it. And now we should be done. See how beautiful. Isn't it amazing? It comes back. It goes there. It comes back. So this is perfect. We are. I'm, we are done with this challenge. Of course, this challenge was optional. This has nothing to do with the final app that we are going to build. But still, I recommend uh, going through all my challenges, whichever I, what all I give you. So that will help you in actually getting some hands-on practice. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we are actually going to look at the next hook which it provides. It is the use transition hook and that is the hook that we are interested in see you in the next video i can't stop myself i'm so excited to directly jump into it but this video is becoming very long so see you in the next video bye